Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks and I'm back again because I know that you're wondering where this guy is. This little guy right here. I'm going to take him off the booty. I'm going to show you how to make this guy right here. Just goes around any booty, any booty, doesn't have to be this one, just makes an, a little accent. You can move it around to either side, it's not connected, you can take it off, do whatever you want to with it. So I'm going to show you how to make this one. Alright, so we're going to take our four, need a four, and I'm going to use the pink, I'm going to make it exactly like this guy, so I'll leave him out so we can see it. Actually, I'll put it right back on here again. So you can see what I'm making and what it's supposed to do. Okay, I'm going to take my four millimeter hook again and I'm going to use the pink. There's my slip knot. However you like to make a slip knot, I make mine this way. And I have my butt. I love these little butterflies and they match these colors so perfectly that I had to use them. So I wanted to show you this one again. So I'll set him over here too. And first we're going to start out making the buttonhole. Underneath the butterfly, there's a little buttonhole. So we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then slip stitch into the very first chain. We're going to make ourselves a little ring. There's a slip stitch like that. We're going to chain one. And then inside this ring right here, we're going to make 15 single crochets. And I always like to mark my first stitch, so I have my stitch marker right here. It just makes it easier to find it, especially if it's something that you're just learning how to do. So that was number one, 15 total. So there's two and 15. So there we go, we have a little circle. There's my first stitch. I went around the original tail just a little bit, but we don't want to pull it closed. You don't want to use a magic circle here or a magic ring because this one you want it to be open because it is a buttonhole. There, can you see that nicely? All right, so we have to slip stitch into our marked stitch. It's easy to find because we marked it and just do a slip stitch and a chain one. Okay, now we're going to start making the braid that goes all the way around the booty. So in this same stitch we just marked, or we just took the marker out of, that we just slip stitched, we did one chain one. We're going to do a single crochet here. There's one. And in the next stitch there's two. The next stitch there's three and the next stitch is four. We want four single crochets on here. So it's starting to bump out a little bit on this side. And chain one and turn our work and do four more single crochets. One, two, three, and four. We're going to do that one more time. Chain one, turn our work, one, two, three, and four. There's the cute little braid, or the start of the cute little braid. Alright, now we have our buttonhole and the base of the buttonhole. And now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into the end down here, kind of loosely. And chain one, turn our work, and inside this little loop right here, we are going to make five single crochets. If you want to, you can use your stitch marker to mark that first one because using a stitch marker makes everybody happy and everything goes faster. That was one, here's two, three, four, and five. 
So that was loop number one. Use my clicker. Right now we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn our work. And in our marked stitch, we are going to slip stitch. So we have another loop. We can take the marker out now because we're going to use them again in a second. And chain one and turn again. We're just going to keep turning. And inside this little loop, right here, five single crochets. So let's mark that first one. One, two, three, four, and five. So now that's the second link. I'm going to mark that, or I'm going to click it, two. So we want a total of twelve, and we have done one, two links. Remember, this is the buttonhole, this is the base of the buttonhole, and now we have two links. We want a total of twelve. So again, one, two, three chains, turn our work, slip stitch into the marked stitch, and chain one. We're going to take out the stitch marker, turn our work, our last chain three space. With one, two, three, four, and five. And click. Now let's just count, shall we? Remember this is the buttonhole, this is the base right here, and then we're going to count these links. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that last one we made is number twelve. Now we have to make the foundation for the button. We're almost done. That's how quickly this goes. You chain one and turn and single crochet across. One and five. So there was number one. We want to do that four times. So chain one and turn and this is row two one, five. Now you finish off leaving a really long tail. So we'll just snip it down here and pull that all the way through and call that done. Use a long tail so that I can snip off a little bit of it and use it to sew on my button. I usually use the same yarn that I just used, so it blends. It's nice. Take one ply. That's all really all you're going to need. And so there's my needle and there's my yarn. Now here's a good safety tip. Check and see if you can get your button through the buttonhole. Oh, I will be able to. No troubles whatsoever. I can get them through there, but if you have a really big button and it won't go through the buttonhole, what you're going to want to do is sew your button through the buttonhole and onto the button base. But I can go through, so I'm going to do this. My button is going to go right here on the last part that we just did. So I'm going to thread my needle really fast and just sew on a button. Everybody knows how to sew on a button. I'm going to turn it over and we're going to tie these two little ends together in a nice knot. That's about all you'll need. There you go. Just wiggle them around a little bit. It'll loosen up a little tiny bit so you can have them over you want. Leave them off to the side a little bit. I think that looks cute because that's the way butterflies look weave in ends. And I'm not going to do that right now because you've got the idea. I'm not going to weave in the ends. Everybody knows how to weave in ends any way that you wish to do that. Alright, well again, that's, I'm Beth with Thimble Hooks. 
Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. I'll see you soon. Bye.